So we've got ECAT on, we too. All righty. Recording in progress. If uh, Dr. Cabral a second to come back on camera, if she'd like. Great. Okay, everybody, we can go ahead and get started. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the Thursday, May 11th, 2023 school committee meeting. In keeping with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations, this meeting will be com conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by committee members will be remote and remote attendance shall count toward quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAT. This meeting is open to the public. We will take comments via the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Please make sure to include your full name and address, and we will do our best to read all comments or answer all questions. However, we will, we will not read questions that have already been answered. All right, so we can go ahead and begin. Um, the first um, motion I'll make tonight is we had a request to move some a presentation, uh, move a presentation up in the agenda. So we will um, hear on the out-of-state trip first, but second, instead of the Quebec trip presentation going after that, um, I'd like to make a motion for the introduction of the Oliver Ames High School Student Advisory Committee because some of those students are uh, performing in the winter, the spring concert at 7 <laughs> p.m. So. Um, so I make a motion to move item four up to item three. Can I get a second? Wiseman second. And roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Okay, great. Okay. So uh, the uh, out-of-state trip, Dr. Cabral. Thank you. Mr. Cedabon, principal of Blanche Ames Elementary School is here. He is going to present a proposal for taking kindergarten students to the Roger Williams Zoo. As you know, because it is an out of state uh, trip, it does require school committee consideration and vote. Mr. Cedabon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, so it is that time of year where we would like to take our kindergarten classes as an extension of their uh, science curriculum on the study of living and non-living things um, to the Roger Williams Park Zoo in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, this year with the cost of buses and um, admission to the zoo, the cost to the student um, is $20 thanks to a $9 uh, subsidy by the PAC for each student. Chaperones um, that are coming will be paying their own way as well. So any um, parent or guardian uh, that is joining the trip will meet the students at the zoo and the cost for them is $18.95. Uh, we will be splitting, now that we're one big building, we'll be splitting the trip uh, across two days. So half of our kindergarten students will be attending on May uh, 23rd and the other half would like to attend on May 24th uh, with five each day so that all students will have a chance to visit. Okay, great, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Cedarbaum? Nancy? I just have one question. If if there's a student or a family that struggles to pay the twenty dollars for the trip, is there a, a scholarship or is there a uh, some way that they can still go without worrying about paying? Yes, absolutely. Any field trip or anything that we offer that comes with a cost, we have a um, note on the bottom that if there was any type of financial hardship or uh, anything that they cannot afford, they just have to reach out to me confidentially. Um, and the PAC has agreed to cover all of those costs um, Thank you. Yeah, throughout the year for many things. Thank you. That's great. Okay. And any other questions or comments? Okay, so can I get a motion to approve the out-of-state trip to Roger Williams Zoo for the Blanche James kindergarten class? So moved to Luca. And a second? Wiseman, second. Roll call vote? To Luca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Great. Thanks, to Mr. Cedarbaum. Hope they have fun. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Um, you, you were just there on fun. Sunday. It's beautiful. <laughs> they got a new panda yesterday. I saw that in the news. I can't wait. <laughs> a red panda. It's exciting. That is exciting. Thank you. Okay. So then now next up on the agenda, we will have uh, Mrs. Kavanaugh presenting the Oliver Ames High School Student Advisory Committee. So Dr. Cabral. Hey. We are excited to introduce you to the Oliver Ames School High School Student Advisory Committee. 
We have five students that are going to serve on this committee, and Mrs. Cavanaugh is here to introduce you to them, provide more details, and answer any questions you might have. Mrs. Cavanaugh? Thank you very much. Um, I'm so excited to share um, these young students with you. They're, they're amazing. Um, they're going to be an unbelievable committee for you, honestly. We had over 20 students apply and run for this position, which just shows how dedicated our students are to having a voice in their education and the education of all kids in Eastern Public School Districts. And these are our five um, students that were elected by their student body. So um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to first do is just um, in have them introduce themselves to you. They're going to share their name, their grade, a little bit about why they wanted to be on the council, and then just something about what they do at the school, how they're involved in the school. And then um, I'll share a little bit about our next steps after that, and we can answer any questions you have for us, okay? So I'm just going to kind of go in, in alphabetical order. Franklin, do you want to go first? Oh, sure. I'm Franklin Chen. I'm a sophomore at Olive Rains, and I wanted to... Uh, represent uh, the school because I was part of student council this year and I felt like I'm really interested in trying to push for more change and bettering uh, student education so I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that and a little bit about myself is actually that I transferred uh, last year uh, from Brockton High and it's been a great experience and uh, Easton has been a great place and very welcoming. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Franklin, awesome job. Okay Braylon, do you want to go next? Hi everyone, so grateful to be here. Um, I'm Raylan Graham and I'm a student athlete at Oliver Ames and I'm a sophomore here. And I think that I have a lot of experience out inside and outside of school and I'm really excited to represent our community and all the different grade levels and even represent the other schools. So I'm definitely very excited to get to know more about our school system and get to participate and oversee these meetings. And I think it'll be a great experience. So thank you so much. Thanks, Braylon. Braylon's one of the um, really active members of our Active Minds chapter as well, which has been working really hard to destigmatize mental health, and her work has been outstanding. She's also a really great runner, so I'm going to give you a little bit more praise, Braylon, than you gave yourself. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Ms. Cavanaugh. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, next we have Annabelle. Hi, my name is Annabelle Justy, and I'm a junior at OA. I'm very excited to be part of the Student Advisory Committee as I want to be able to provide a more diverse voice on some of the issues and experiences that students um, experience at OA. And I want to be able to help formulate ways of continuing to make OA a safe place and work to keep on making it a place where everyone has a voice and feels heard. A little bit about myself is I've been on the varsity belonging team for two years. I'm co-president of School on Wheels, and I'm also part of the Make-A-Wish and Biology Club. Thank you. Thanks, Annabelle. Great job. Okay, next we have Alyssa Kenny. Um, hi, I'm Alyssa Kenny. I'm a junior at Oliver Ames. Um, I wanted to join this committee because I'm also very interested in bettering um, the educational opportunities of myself and my peers. And I'm very um, also specifically interested in creating more mental health resources and resources that support student mental health. And a little bit about myself is that I'm very active in the performing arts programs in Oliver Ames. I stage managed Footloose uh, the Musical this past March. And I'm also co-president of Oliver Ames's Active Minds chapter, which is concerned with student mental health. Yes, you've done a great job, Lisa, with that. The, I, I mean, I, um, give them a shout out. The Active Minds chapter got a, um, a grant to have a guest speaker come in on um, mental health and they're coming in tomorrow. I'm really excited to have them and I'm thankful for them for doing the work on it. Okay, finally, we have Marvel. Last but not least, do you want to introduce yourself, Marvel? Hi, my name is Marvel Nimmer. I am a sophomore at Oliver Ames and I initially wanted to join the advisory council to really ensure the unity of all students amongst all grades, and I'm really excited to be incorporated into the council. Um, I'm an active member of many extracurricular sports in the music department, and I can't wait to learn more about the educational system. Thank you. Thanks, Marvel. I'm going to give you a shout out too. Marvel was one of the members of our DEI Principal Student Advisory Council this year and had a really strong voice in the things that we can do to create a more inclusive school. And I really appreciate you, Marvel, for that. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, you're welcome. Um, so our next steps, we met today uh, for our first time. 
and talked about um, over the next month, we will um, assign roles. So as we spoke about when I, we originally presented this to the school committee, one student will be the non-voting member of the school committee next year and attend meetings or portions of meetings. The other students will each take on a role in ensuring that every student in the Easton Public Schools has the opportunity to have a voice. So reaching out to Principal Cedarbaum and um, Getchell and Principal Carroll to make sure that they're meeting with students at the different levels to learn about their needs and being and and not only their needs, but honestly, like the celebrations that we're having right now and the great things that are happening in Easton Public Schools. And they will share that out to you um, once a month. Um, all right, do you, have any, do you guys have any questions for us? Committee members, any questions or comments? Uh, Nancy and then Jackie. Okay, um, congratulations to the five of you. This is um, very um, a, 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 just wonderful. And congratulations, we look forward to working with you uh, as we go along. Thank you. And Jackie? Yeah, I also wanted to say congratulations. And I'm I'm really excited to hear how this goes and to hear the reports that you guys are going to bring to us. I think that's really going to, it's going to help us get a, a really nice overview of what's going on in schools. So thank you for giving your time to this. And Lauren? I just wanted to say congratulations. Um, you're all very impressive future leaders. Um, and I look forward to working with you. Right. And uh, I'll, I'll echo congratulations and the uh, impressive. Um, and some of you, some of you are, are names I'm familiar with already because you're already in um, leadership roles and making a difference among your peers. So we really look forward to meeting with you. And um, Vice Chair Michelle Durant could not be here tonight due to a conflict. But um, when she was the chair, this was something that she worked um, with Mrs. Kavanaugh on a lot. So I know that um, she misses the opportunity to be here and to congratulate you, and she'll probably watch this. So I will uh, share in advance. Um, I, I know she's very grateful and excited about this, um, as, as are the rest of us. So we really look forward to working with you in the future. It's going to be a great partnership. And I would just like to add, we're so very proud of you. <laughs> and excited that you're willing to invest this time and this service on behalf of yourselves and your and your peers and, and the littles in our district. Uh, this is really encouraging. There are a lot of things that they won't necessarily tell us, but they'll tell you as other students and uh, you're their voice. And we're so incredibly thankful to you for being willing to play that role. We can't wait to work with you and learn from you and um, share with you. And I know that great things will come from this. And I also would like to, to thank um, the former chair, Mrs. Durant and Mrs. Kavanaugh for working on this. I know it was a lot of work, a lot of organization. The fact that we had so many students that were interested in serving this kind of a role really says a lot about our student body. And the fact that the five of you have gotten to this point says a lot about you as individuals as well. So. We look forward to working with you. This is going to be a great team. And um, thank you for your willingness to assist us in this way. Thank you all very much. And to those of you performing tonight, break a leg, have a great show. And if we wrap up early enough, I will be in the audience. <laughs> we'll see you guys Fingers there. crossed. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so uh, next up on the agenda is the Quebec trip presentation. Dr. Cabral? Hey, Mrs. Michael, who is the uh, French teacher at the middle school, and um, Amy Jimini, who is a paraprofessional at Blaine James, if she is. They are, um, and she's a parent as well of Nina, going to add that. They'll be joining to share their perspectives as, as um, chaperone and um, travelers for the recent trip to Quebec. Mrs. Michael will be presenting on the trip that took place in April. We are all very grateful for your support, school committee, for um, sponsoring this, supporting this endeavor. Again, this is, these are experiences you cannot replicate in the classroom. And um, I've heard great things 
about the trip from students and participants alike. And I think you're going to be thrilled with what you see and all that the students were able to do and learn on this trip. And I'm going to echo what I always say about these trips, that these are our team members who have given up their time with their families at their homes to take these kids, um, not only to another state, but to another country, which can be a lot of work. And they see lovely sights and that's great, but it's a lot of responsibility when they could be home with their own children or spouses or um, just relaxing. And so we wanna make sure that um, they understand how thankful we are that they are going out of their way to provide these opportunities for our students. So thank you very much for doing that. Now I'll turn it over to Mrs. Michael. All right, so uh, it's been a while since I've done it all on you. So everyone can hear me okay? Awesome. So I have a video I put together with photos and stuff from the trip that I wanted to try to share. But again, it's been a minute since I've done the virtual thing and I'm more versed in Google Meet. So I'm gonna try sharing my screen and seeing if this works. We'll find out in a second. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and talk over the video. Okay, so shoot now. Uh, you know what? You're getting there. It's getting was, started. Was it I'm going to try one more time. And then I can't see you anymore. So if someone could just verbally tell that it's working, that would be great. It says you've started screen sharing. Okay, cool. Do we see the video now? Not yet. Not yet. Hmm. Anything now? Nope. Do you have it on your desktop? No, I'm on my iPad, and so I'm not sure that that's going to work. And of course, now I don't even know how to get back to you guys. Okay. Oh, here I am. Okay. I'm back. You know what? I will talk. Do you want to email it to me? Yeah, actually, you know what I can do? You is can I start can... talking and I'll share yeah. it. That sounds great. So, um, so thank you all, first of all. Um, it was so exciting to be able to put the Quebec trip back on this year. The kids had been asking, the seventh graders last year kept going, is it, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And I said, I hope, I'm very hopeful that it will happen. Um, so a couple numbers for y'all. We had 47 students, seven EMS chaperones, six parents, one grandparent, two buses, two tour guides, eight hours there, eight hours back on those buses, four days and three nights of an adventure. Um, and it, it was just an absolute adventure. Um, I, I mean, it, it's a lot of work, as Dr. Kaval said, planning and putting it together. But it is so worth it to be able to take my students on a trip like that. Um, they have some notes here. Let's see, I don't know what I want to mention. Okay, so um, they were so excited. I had one one student in particular who I think must have asked me or talked to me about the Quebec trip every single day, like two, three months leading up to it. Every day there was something new. The money was exchanged, three chargers that can charge with solar or whatever, I don't know, very exciting stuff. Um, and so the lead up to it in and of itself was a big thing. Um, and the trip itself was was so, so much fun for them. It was also, I think, surprisingly challenging for some of them um, and a little bit exhausting in, in good ways though. I was really struck by how many kids expressed that they felt homesick on this trip that hadn't in years past. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it just speaks to the fact that these kids haven't had opportunities like this over the past three years due to COVID and what the world has been like. And so they weren't used to maybe being away from home for so long. And they expressed homesickness and then they showed up for each other and they talked to the adults who were on the trip and they let us know that they were feeling down and that they were a little bit stressed out and they were able to get through those moments. And I know that overall, in spite of whatever tough moments they had, they all really had a blast on the trip. Um, so, you know, when we think about things like student travel and this being an opportunity we can't replicate in the classroom, I think, of course, a huge part of it is being immersed in French, seeing French everywhere, hearing it all around you, and then also the personal growth aspect of doing something that's new and different and challenging. Um, Michael, did you share that with me? Did you want to show it? I'm working on it, you know. Oh, no we, problem. That's fine. I just didn't know if I missed it. You just, no, continue. you're doing great. Thanks. No, you didn't miss it. Um, so that was a big part of it. Then every year, the kids are always really impressed by how much French gets spoken in Quebec and in Canada. They don't really speak French. They um, had a hard time understanding some of our tour guides because their French accents were so thick. So it was really interesting to watch them also just sort of hear English with a French accent and try to figure that one out as well. 
Um, let's see. All right, Dr. Gabriel, I'm getting there with the video. Um, and so some of the activities we did, we went to a First Nation, Nations village and we learned all about how um, life was like before the Europeans came over and settled and colonized. And I think, I think that's always a really valuable moment in the trip where the kids get to think not just about the French aspect, but the history beyond that. We had a curling lesson where we all got on the ice and tried our hand at curling. Never done it before. It was so much fun. Um, they had a blast with that. That was a new one for me. We went to the aquarium. That was a new one for us. And I was pleasantly surprised by how much the kids loved it. There was, um, they were able to pet stingrays and see a polar bear. They tried all sorts of different food. Some they liked, some they didn't, but they tried it. Um, and then one of the things I heard a lot from the students was that their favorite part of the trip was the time where they got to have a little bit of freedom. So there's a street um, in Quebec City that has lots of shops and restaurants on it. And on every trip at some point in time, we'll say, you can go between this point in the street and that point in the street shopping as long as you're a group of four together. And then all of the adults are just everywhere on the street, right? So we're all there and we have eyes on them, but they get to have a little sense of what it's like to be on their own. And they just really appreciate that opportunity to explore and sort of see the city from their own perspective. Um, I always see student travel as just a great opportunity for students to see the real life application of what we do in the classroom. And two, I think it just inspires them to think about what they can do in their future lives. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mrs. Gemetti if, if you don't mind jumping in a little bit because Mrs. Gemetti was there as both a parent of one of the travelers and a chaperone and also works for our school district as well. So she covers lots of lots of. Can you guys hear me okay? Am I good? Yes, you're okay, good. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, echoing everything Mademoiselle just said, it was a wonderful experience for the kids and for the parents, too. I know that I have never spoken a lick of French, but all of the kids knew that they were there to kind of help the adults that maybe need a little, a little extra help, too. I think it boosted their confidence. Yeah, it's so um, cool. One of the things that I liked in particular is seeing the kids apply the French that they've learned in school in a real world setting. And it gives them the confidence to kind of speak out loud. And everybody I think that interacted with them was very patient and happy that they were trying their best to learn the language. Um, one of the things that I enjoyed the most, you know, as, as Mademoiselle just said, was watching the kids have a little bit of freedom. Um, they, interacted with each other outside of groups that they may have had to interact with each other inside of school. They, a lot of kids, I think maybe had more experience exchanging money or making purchases that they might not have been able to do or had that much exposure to at home. Um, one of the other things that I think that was very important was going through customs I haven't done it in many years, and I don't think that most of the kids did, but when we, when the kids were instructed to on the, on the bus, you know, this is what you have to do. You have to take off your hat, you know, be quiet, be respectful, whatnot. You could hear a pin drop that they followed the, di the directions and instructions and knew that this was something that was serious business. Not one kid giggled or made a joke that they shouldn't have things like that so it allowed them to be mature in a situation that really called for it, and they all rose to the challenge i'm bummed that it's over it was a little bit sad even though we were exhausted and there was laundry and sleep to catch up on i think it was a good experience for everyone involved um especially after the last few years that we've had for them to get out explore the world and have some fun so Great, thanks. I have the video. Like oh, you do. Okay, I wanted to just jump in and really quickly say, actually, um, I, one of one of my great memories from this trip was Amy's daughter, um, Mrs. Jimetti's daughter. Uh, we were doing a walking tour, and the tour guide said in French, "Does anyone here speak French?" And without missing, <laughs> her daughter jumped in and asked in perfect French, "Can I go to the bathroom, please?" Which what? is the commonly used expression in my classroom. Um, <laughs> because the tour guide immediately responded, like. Yeah, but not right now. Like knew what it, knew what she was saying. It was you know not a problem at all. So it was, and it was cool to have that moment. I think you know I don't know if she remembered it, but you know she just out with it, no thinking. Like there it was. Great. So, okay. 
So you did get the video? I did, yes. Yeah. Okay, so just a heads up, it is on the longer side, so you know you don't have to watch the whole thing if you are have a lot of other stuff going on. So feel free to truncate it or speed it up. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. It's it's two and a half minutes. It's not that long. <laughs> okay. Did you want sound or this is um this one was the no music version Perfect. of it. So okay. Talk. Um. <laughs> How was the weather? It was surprisingly beautiful. Um, I think probably the best weather of any trip we've had yet. Too cold, wow. mostly really warm. Wow. Mm. I have so many questions. <laughs> you jumped in since I didn't put any music on there. Well, this is go so quickly. <laughs> oh, I, have, I think I have over 300 photos in my personal photo album, and then we have a shared group photo album. Oh, with, wow. I want to say it's in the thousands of photos. Where's the waterfall? Um, it's right outside of Quebec. It's this is Nishut Montmorency, which is, I guess, taller than Niagara, but not quite as wide. And it's just right there. Oh, wow. oh one actually, I love that. We yeah, went curling for lunch one day, which was quite a fun experience for the kids to go shopping in a different grocery store and to see like the different products they had in Canada. They were super excited. That is a parent chaperone in the background there who's petting that stingray. Oh. <laughs> Sugar Shack, well, they have fun. some cool outdoor activities after we have our lumberjack dinner and maple syrup. Now I'm sad we don't have sound, is my <laughs> I'll send you the other version of it. You can take a look at that last one. <laughs> that was great. Across you the snowman in French on the bus to our tour guide. As a thing. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you all so much for your support. I, I will hopefully be back soon, actually, with a proposal for next year. I've got some different ideas in mind. So um, thank you so much for this year. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon. Doesn't great. look like how you can top that trip. That looked fun. <laughs> Does, um, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Nancy? So I was, I had a chance to chat with one of the um, kids that went on the trip with you and he said he had a blast and he goes, but I hear they're going next year in February so they can sled or something. I forget what he said, but I'm like, really? Because didn't you get to do curling? And, the, and uh, so he was very excited. Giving away your secrets. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Happy, happy to tell you dog sledding is actually the thing that made me think oh, dog sledding. Yeah, dog, dog sledding, sledding. snowshoeing. And so, yeah, that is that is what I have in the work. So you'll hopefully be seeing the new itinerary sometime soon. And, and also, Can we come? <laughs> as, a, as a former chaperone on, on, you know, student trips to places, I uh, give you, Ms. Gemetti, and all the people, all the adults that went the utmost credit. Oh, my gosh because it is a lot, it's it's a lot. So thank you very much for doing that. 
You're welcome. It was great. It was nice to see kids out of the element of school, socializing and having fun and being silly. So that's an important part of it too, especially as a parent to see how, you know, all the kids that I've heard about for so long actually spend time with them and get to know, know them as well. Okay. Uh, did anybody else have any questions or comments? Great. Well, thank you so much for presenting. Um, I think, uh, Mademoiselle, you may recall that uh, my, my son was in the class that was canceled and I know how much the kids look forward to that. And, um, and so it, I'm very glad that, you, that you're back at it and got to take a trip uh, with kids and, and have that tradition back. So thank you so much for going so above and beyond to give them this opportunity. It's really amazing. It's such a commitment of time and energy. So we really appreciate it. It looks like a blast. Thanks. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, moving to some slightly less fun. I know, that was great. <laughs> but important business. Uh, next up, I'm going to make a motion to enter into executive session and return to open session for the purpose of compliance with open meeting law to review minutes of prior executive sessions from September 15th, October 6th, October 20th, November 3rd, November 17th, December 1st, and December 15th of 2022, as well as February 2nd, February 16th, and March 9th of 2023, and pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, subsection 21.3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for SPIA, the Southeastern Public Employees Association, Secretarial clerical, custodian, and food service. And in my opinion, having these discussions in public would be detrimental to the bargaining position of the school committee. Can I get a second? Wiseman second. Okay, great. And roll call vote? Luke, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Okay, all right, everybody. So hold on and we'll be back in a little bit.
Okay, everybody's back and audio is working. All right, great. All right, so um, so we'll move on to item seven on the agenda, and this is a vote, possible vote to release executive session minutes. So I make a motion to release executive session minutes from September fifteenth, twenty twenty two. November 3rd, 2022, and February 2nd, 2023. Can I get a second? DeLuca, second. <clears throat> and roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Okay, great. All right, so next up on the agenda is more fun with minutes, so minutes from a regular meeting on April 27th. Any questions, comments, edits on these minutes? Okay. So not seeing any. Uh, let's see, so I'll make a motion to accept the regular meeting minutes from Thursday, April 27th, 2023. Can I get a second? Wiseman second. And roll call vote. Luca yes. Wiseman yes. Star yes. Loomis yes. Okay, great. And next is executive session minutes from April 27th, 2023. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or edits which would require us holding these for an executive session review? Okay. All right, so we can either um, take a motion to approve and release or approve and not release. So does anybody want to make a motion either way? I make a motion to approve and release. Okay, I second that. And roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wasman, yes. Star, yes. Okay, great, thank you. And then next up is our public hearing on school choice for the 2023-2024 school year. Dr. Cabral. Thank you. Annually, the school committee is required by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to determine if they would like to participate in an interdistrict program. What that means is that uh, the school committee can decide if they would like to open seats in the district to students who are not residents of Easton. You can do that in whole or you can do that in parts. In parts, I mean, you can say there are four seats in the second grade or eight spots in the 10th grade, um, something like that, or unlimited number of spots in first grade or grades PK to five or any configuration that um, works. We have, since this started, we have not ever had um, school choice as an option in large part because we really don't have the space. Now we have the Bland James Elementary School. Um, and as I was uh, reporting during the budget process, as of next year, our classrooms are actually going to be full. Um, we're actually going to fill all of our pre-K classrooms next year, and, and our other classrooms were completely at capacity, which is a good thing. Um, and so as these children move through the district, they're going to be a large cohort, but I don't think that that trend is over yet. I think we're going to see a few years of that, particularly as we're coming out of COVID and as um, families are moving into town and now with the completion of the new school. So I, at this point, don't have a recommendation of a grade band in the district right now that has that kind of space uh, for extra students. And so it's for the considerate, you have a packet that describes it in much more detail in your, um, I'm sorry, you have a handout in your packet that describes it in much more detail. And for anyone watching, it is on the Department of Ed website under school choice. Um, and we do have students who live in Easton that participate in school choice in other districts, very, very, very few, um, but that is their option. 
sometimes um, they come back, sometimes they stay. It's, it's really their choice. And for many different reasons, sometimes it's for academics or sports or what have you, proximity to family. Um, we just don't have the space at this time. So this is for your review and for you to vote has to be done by June every year. It's for your vote of whether you will allow school choice in Easton or not for the next school year. Okay, Jackie. Uh, Dr. Cabral, I apologize if you mentioned this already, but mm -hmm. my understanding with school choice is, say we voted to say, allow grades three, four, and five to have school choice. We would be obligated to continue those students through till they graduated. It wouldn't be like they could do it for one year and then the next year we could say we have no room. It, they would go through till the end, correct? correct? Once you accept a student in school choice, they're yours until graduation. The other thing I wanted to clarify is um, when you participate in school choice, this is it the sending district pays a fee to the school choice district? Yes. And is that fee what normally covers the cost of educating a child in our district? No, okay. it's uh, it's nominal. Um, it's you know less than five thousand dollars per student. Okay. Per pupil expenditure at the state now is seventeen thousand dollars per student. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Does anybody else have any um, questions? Or comments for Dr. Cabral or, or anything they want to discuss as a committee? Okay. All right. So I guess we can uh, go ahead then and move this to a vote. So uh, does anybody want to make a motion or I can go ahead and make a motion? Seeing, all right. So I'll make a motion to uh, to continue to not participate in school choice across the district for the next year. Can I get a second? Wiseman second. And roll call vote. Luca yes. Wiseman. Star yes. Lumis yes. Great, thank you. And the next item on the agenda is the discussion and vote on animal assistive therapy policy file IMGA. This is the second reading. Correct. So there was some language specific to, uh, we're, first of all, I just want to say we're very appreciative that you have such a policy. The policy that you provided several years ago has actually served as a model for many districts in the state um, that have superintendents that have reached out, especially now with the um, increase in mental health needs and finding that these therapy animals really do provide a lot of comfort and um, help with de-escalation of escalated students when really we, we brought this into the district more so, if you remember, it was in the speech language pathology area. Um, there was a lot of, re still is a lot of research about children interacting with animals and being very comfortable talking to them, reading to them um, and um, using social cues with them. And it has been successful since it's been in the district. We've had one therapy dog for, for several years. Now, uh, in addition to, <clears throat> we have actually, I've, I've spoken to the Bristol County Sheriff's Department. You may have seen in the news, they are working with several districts on things like bringing in therapy canine dogs when there is a tragedy in school, um, when they want to um, help in a particular classroom or at a function, or even with individual students, they come through proactively and meet with kids. And it's really been found to be a motivation for students to know that the animal is coming, that it's, um, they can interact with the animal. But also, like I said, if there is a tragedy, um, they do provide comfort. We know that from our from our own homes, right? Your policy is very specific about what needs to be done. We found that that has stood the test of time. However, there are there were a couple of specific references to uh, to the speech program in it toward the end of it, which of course was due to the fact that that's what we're using it for. But now uh, we just would like to to have that language be a little bit more broad. I did present that to you at the last meeting. And also a big part of it is 
the fact that the policy exists is one thing, but I really wanted you to consider providing guidance on whether you would like something in the policy that says that anybody who would want to bring in an assistive animal would need to come before the school committee or before the superintendent. We just, we don't, what we don't want is for someone to just follow the policy and go ahead and do it because they're following the policy. We would want to make sure that we knew where this was happening, when this was happening. We want to make sure we communicate it. It's still relatively new and uh, it's not in every school. And so we want to make sure that we communicate clearly with parents and the public. So something in there, I just didn't know the level of, of participation the school committee wanted. So any guidance you can give in that area would be helpful. And this is a second reading, so you are required to have two readings on any changes of policies, and you could vote on it this evening or put it forward if you wanted to consider it a little longer. Thank you. So committee members, any, any comments, questions, thoughts? Jackie? Thank you, Dr. Cabral. So it looks like you made the changes to get out the speech language and make it more general. But are you, you, so you're also suggesting that we add something in there that um, requires somebody who wants to have a, um, a, a animal come in that they have to have the permission or a review or however we want to put it. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily coming before the school committee unless others disagree. I think it makes more sense um, whether it's building administration or central administration, I mean, I agree that there should be that level in it. Um, I think you guys are probably more, um, it, it makes more sense because you know the student body, you know the person that's bringing in the animal. So I think that would make more sense. I don't know how everyone else feels. Lauren? So I have some questions. Mm -hmm. um, is this open to all schools? Yes. And I'm I'm thinking mainly for the littles. Yep. What if there's someone who is very afraid of of dogs? That is um, that is addressed in the policy that the dog has to have a particular temperament. They have to be in a particular area, and that it also talks about the characteristics of the students that would be allowed to interact with the dog and fear of dogs, of course, is one of the disqualifying factors. Um, in addition to a, a child that is maybe too dysregulated that may reach out and grab the dog or have jarring movements, things like that. So um, there are characteristics or behavior traits listed in the policy for the, both the animal, but also the children that interact with the animal. What if it's a, a a child that doesn't interact with it just is in the same classroom. So they're is that considered are, interaction if they're in the classroom. Yes, exactly. Okay. They, they are used for specific purposes. The dog can't just roam freely around the school with the handler. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with the handler, uh, it has to be very specific. There are logistics a list of logistics here, uh, care for the animal in terms of being sure that it has proper training, it has all of its medical documentation, that it is groomed a particular way, that even the children, once they use it, they use disinfectant on their hands. Um, the room itself has to be taken care of once the dog is in it and out of it. Uh, typically, we have the children come to the animal as opposed to the dog just going into a classroom. It really hasn't been, you know, it, it just doesn't randomly go into a classroom. It would have to be very purposeful. Um, there has to be a reason for it. Um, it has to be planned and advanced. And it says um, the third bullet down under interaction logistics and requirements, the therapy animal, animal will be limited to specific classroom or area of a building. So it, it, it is not allowed to actually just go into a classroom. A, a teacher can't ask for the dog to come into a classroom. Um, you know, it would have to be predetermined between the therapist and the teacher. 
And Dr. Cabral, so this is an existing policy for an existing program. So how long has the program been running? I, 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 first, I think I first, I think my very first interaction or, or you know, of the, with the program was at Special Olympics last year. So it's not something that I've even casually run into okay. um, over the years with my kids in the district. So it is very well controlled from that perspective that unless I think you're part of the program or really in the school all the time, you wouldn't even know Right. It, the dog was just at the middle school and now he's at the high school. So he's never even been in pre-K to five. Otto is his name. Uh, but the, the, now we have people asking again from the mental health perspective. So now it may be a little bit more widespread. It could be in each school. Um, and we did, we did have a bit of a, a miscommunication because someone was looking, a therapist was looking to bring in an animal for just that as a comfort animal for others and provided all the appropriate documentation, but because it doesn't say like it actually needs to be approved in the policy, um, it, was, it was about to go ahead and we didn't have an understanding that that was happening. So I just wanna to try to avoid that in the future. The person did not violate anything in here, it was very, and then since then, we've had another request for a therapy animal here. So I know that there are at least two on deck, so to speak, for therapeutic purposes. This is outside of speech. This is for mental health, comfort. Um, these are certified educators, therapists with either special ed and or therapy backgrounds with uh, animals that have been trained. Um, and they are providing all the documentation, but in terms of just sort of, you know, having, having a process, whether that's just it's submitted to and approved by central administration, I think that's plenty, just to make sure people know so that there's not a miscommunication about that. Well, um, similar to Jackie's feedback, I, I'm comfortable with whatever whatever you think the appropriate level is, whether that's central administration or building level, I, I don't think that's something that we need to approve, okay. um, you know, on a case by case basis. But that's just my thoughts. So Nancy, Lauren. So that's what I was gonna ask that <clears throat> this policy, you know, it's very well written and so forth, but. It doesn't that address everything that we need to, as far as the 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 two on deck. I mean, are we all set with that? Well, I haven't gone through the paperwork yet because it just came to my attention. So I literally have packages, but I haven't gone through them yet. Yes, mm -hmm. it would have to, but I don't want someone to feel as though they feel they have all the documentation, and so they go ahead and do it, but it hasn't actually been reviewed. Okay, it's just a but do we need to add anything to this policy is what I'm asking. Like we're good with this policy. The policy's good. I would just suggest maybe a phrase that says before the dog enters the building, all the appropriate documentation has to be received and approved by central administration. That's all. Because there's a lot. I mean, there's in that in, in as there should be. There's so insurance. There's why don't you make that the second sentence? I'm sorry. Right there, well, in the very beginning of the of the um, policy, it says Eastern Public Schools will institute blah 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 blah. This will be a tool used within the school system. Right there, mm -hmm. that right next sentence, what you just said. So it's on the top of the policy. Nobody can miss it. Okay. So do we want to um, finalize the wording and vote on it, and then Lynn can do the update after this meeting, so we don't have sure. to come back and vote on it again. Okay. So what was that sentence again? <laughs> All any document, go ahead. Therapy, uh, hmm. therapists must um, submit all, this is not what I said, but all documentation must be received by Uh, central office and permission must be 
or or an and um permission must be granted by the superintendent or their designee just to make sure we have a beat on yep. where they are all the time and i want to carefully go through the documentation like i said they put in a lot of work to put it all together and we would just want to make sure we have everything we need i'll probably i mean even the insurance i'd want legal to review that you know so the sentence is any therapist must submit all documentation to central office and permission must be granted by the superintendent or her designee or the designee before the animal enters building before the okay well, but it's not before the animal enters the building every single time, right? It's oh, right. Yes, of course. Uh, before, before the animal is approved to be part of this program or something. Okay. Before the an right before the animal is approved for this program. Okay, and I'm going to try to convince Lynn to get certified. And get an animal here, central office. <laughs> so, um, all right. Any other questions, comments, or discussion on the policy? I know this. It is a. It's a great. I saw it work at the middle school and at the high school. So it's it's really a. It's a plus for a lot of kids. And again not just like the field trips, but on the same idea, this is a current employee, right? This is not an outside person. This is a current employee that is willing to take on this responsibility. I mean, this is a great responsibility. They, mm -hmm. They're investing their own money and time into certification, licensing, um, very strict procedures to bring augmented services to our children. So I appreciate that people are willing to do this. Okay. Great. All right. So can I get a motion to accept the uh, the changes to let me just uh, to the animal assisted therapy policy file IMGA with amendments discussed today? So moved to Luca. And a second. Second Wiseman. And roll call vote. To Luca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Great. All right, next item is discussion and vote on enrollment of students based on residence, file JF-E-3, second reading. This is another policy that was brought to your attention. There was just a little bit of confusion around it in the district um, as people are registering to come to school here. The suggested changes from your last meeting are in your packet for your review. And again, because it's a second reading, you can either postpone this or you can vote on it this evening. Okay, so does uh, any committee members have questions or comments? I know, uh, all right, I do, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, did we intend to strike uh, like uh, like item six seems to me to be a very reasonable um, exception to residency and uh, yeah uh, yeah item six I, I don't know if we intended to strike that i'm not i know we had a bit of discussion back and forth at the last meeting um so that is a practice that we have um sometimes honestly depending on the needs of the student it's longer than that mm -hmm. um yeah mark is there anything i don't see anything in here that gives discretion outside of this policy and i, I would like to see that i on, I, J, on if you look at the next one on jca Yep. Um, the reason I had originally put a strike through that language is because I felt that it was um, covered in numbers one and two, which gave us a lot of latitude for that. 
um, if the change involves an exceptional child, hardship case, medical considerations, or if the change is in the best interest of the child, schools, disciplinary or inter administrative reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but that was more for, and I think Jackie pointed it out to me yeah. earlier, that was more for kids going across schools, not finishing. Right. So right. because of that, I, I honestly, though, wouldn't even put a number of days on it because mm. I think it needs to be even a little bit more liberal than that not because it's a common occurrence but it's very very uh, it's very specific to the child um, and their circumstances they may be displaced and living somewhere temporarily and you know if a student's going to be out of school for six weeks or eight weeks because they're moving somewhere but they know they're going to be moving back to easton and then september they're going to move back again i would that's not in the best interest interest of most children. So something along the lines of Do something like a student who becomes a non-resident during the school year may still be able to attend Eastern Public Schools at the discretion of the superintendent. Right, but I would leave that they need to provide transportation because anytime okay. or let a student continue, it was contingent upon the parent sure. transportation. I like that. Yeah, because I, I agree with Jackie that my reading of, of JCA was assuming that they still met residency requirements and this was right. just a different like when we had multiple. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would put though in extenuating circumstances because I don't want to okay. mislead people to sure. that it's common that in September or even January we just allow students to stay. That's actually that's not the law, and we okay. are we are responsible for upholding that law and being stewards of taxpayers' money. Sure. Um, but there are exceptions. There have been exceptions. So and something so, like a student who becomes a non-resident during the school year may be allowed to stay in Eastern public schools under extenuating circumstances so at the discretion. Yeah. yeah. No longer than I never then, let anybody stay longer than a year than that school year. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's never like, the superintendent to complete the school year. Actually, that's not true. Sorry. No. Okay. Well, I had one exception. So why don't we just leave it at your discretion? Because that way, you don't have. You know, is that um, okay? Well, or I would say you know, it's it? always been extenuating circumstances, like extraordinary. Right. Really extraordinary circumstances. Um, but not put just till the end of the year? Yes, but that? I no, I would say um, most often to the end of the school year. There's only one instance where I just don't want to not be able to do that. It was a very Okay, why don't why don't we do this? Why don't I'll, I'll just try to come up with a sentence. I'll send okay. it out. We'll go to the next time. Sorry, that's okay. okay. It's hard talking about these singleton cases because I don't. Mm. But so that kind of brings up Jace. Do we even need JCA Where? anymore now that we have oh, right. one? Page. You know. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. We're very much on the same page. So should we? Um, you know, schedule a future, do we need, if we're removing something from the manual or do we, um, do we need to schedule that for a vote? Yeah, I think we need to vote to remove it. I don't, do we need two readings of removing it though? That I'm not sure. Well, we, we did review it last time and you're reviewing it again this time. Okay. We talked about JCA last time as well. Okay. So it wasn't, specifically listed on the agenda. I don't know if that's the the other policy, JF-E-3 yeah. was specifically listed both times, but not JCA. Okay, so I think if we're gonna vote to remove this policy, it should be done next the book. <laughs> yes. You know, okay. vote to remove. Okay, JCA. so we'll add that to the agenda for next time. And JCA. then let's see, and then today, so because we do have a vote on the agenda for today, Yep. Uh, Jackie or Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, can we make a motion to 
Table of vote. Table of vote. vote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I make a motion to table the vote on policy JF E 3 until a later date. Can I get a second on that? Wiseman second. And a roll call vote. Delupe, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Okay. So and can we'll I have that on the next agenda? You can I just ask a question about J? Is JF on the agenda? These were all together last time, I think. That's just JFE3 is okay. on the agenda. All right. So I have a question about JF for the next one. So. Okay. So we'll add J, JCA, JFE3, and then was it just, uh, what was the last one? Just JF? JF. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll make Thank sure you. all three of those are on the next meeting. Lemonoki. Okay. All right. Pass the alphabet soup. Um, <laughs> do, you have, do you have JF in your packet? No. No. Oh, okay. Because I can't find it. So I. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think it so was maybe last week in our packet, the okay, last time. No problem. All right, so next up is the vote to approve the superintendent to sign to the Bi-County Collaborative Board of Directors for 2023-2024. Dr. Cabral. Thank you. Uh, the Bi-County Collaborative is a special education collaborative on which I sit as a board member. The collaborative is um, when we are outplacing students for day placement, the collaborative is, are, is one of the providers that we use. Um, they have several sites for several different needs of students that we just cannot serve in our district. Typically they are um, of a high need, a very specific need and uh, a very low number of students such that we can't afford to create a program for the number of students. So by co or by county is one of them. Ha uh, being on the board and being a member district uh, does give us some advantages. First of all, our tuition rate is less. Second of all, which has been very uh, recently very advantageous to the district is that we get um, priority for placement in the programs. So just like I was saying, you know, the, the mental health placements, the special education placements, they're very few and far between. And people have had a very tough time finding placements for children that are appropriate for them. Fortunately, because we're a member district, in addition to getting a lower rate, we also get priority for our children going into the program. So we have quite a few students that are, um, that are being educated through the BICO Collaborative. In addition to that, having a seat at that table allows me to have a say in the um, goals of the collaborative that we have students going to, the professional development that staff receive, uh, the hiring, the terminations, and evaluation of the executive director, as well as the budget. And so it's very um, helpful to the district to be able to do that. And I would request that the committee appoint me or approve my seat at the board of director table again for the 23-24 school year. Any questions or comments for Dr. Cabral? Seeing none, can I get a motion to approve uh, Dr. Cabral's assignment to the Bi-County Collaborative Board of Directors? So moved to Luca. And a second. Second, Wasman. And roll call vote. Toluca, yes. Wasman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Great. Okay, next up, public comments. Thank you to our two attendees. <laughs> I'm not seeing any comments. Um, so I think we can, we will move on to the next item, which is superintendent notes. Dr. Cabral. Thanks. A couple of things. First of all, uh, I would like to suggest that we have a school committee executive session on May 31st, the, that is adding it to your schedule. 
The reason would be to discuss the scholarships. Annually, you have that presented to you by the Director of Guidance. Unfortunately, um, or fortunately, many of those scholarships are based on GPA and, and grade performance, and those are not finished yet, of course. Class night is on June 1st, and they would like as much time as possible to have all of the work submitted, completed, final exams, and so forth, which means that we would need an executive session review on May 31st. I don't know if there's a time that works, if that date works for you, but um, Susan Mancuso, Director of Guidance, would really appreciate a May 31st executive session. Um, are uh, members able to check their calendars now? And for that, we would just need a quorum of three, right? Yes. So checking the 31st. Um, I would, and I imagine we could, yes, we're, we're virtual, right? Okay. <laughs> it's all virtual. Um, so, I would be available from 11 to 12 and 12.30 to um, 2.30 and after 4. So if any of those times work for anybody. I'm available from 11 to 12 and after 4. I'm available from 11 to 12 and I can be, I can be available after four. Okay. And Lauren, it just, it, it's a quick meeting. Um, it, it really only takes a, a few minutes to go through the list. So, um, and it sounds like we do have three, three of us available, but Lauren, would you be, avail would you be available from uh, at some point during 11 to 12? Um, yes. Okay. I think so. Okay. And Is Dr. You Dr. Cabral and Lynn, does that, does that work for you it both? Does. I just want to, I, I was going to remind you it, it, that that does work, but I wanted to remind you in case you were interested in, in attending, it isn't open to the public, but it is open to the school committee that on the 31st from 9.30 to 12.30 is our senior mark. We don't have to get buses. It's nice, compact. Hopefully we just have a good day. So if you'd like to come and then attend the meeting or vice versa, depending on what time your meeting is, it'll be 9.30 to 12.30 on campus. Hmm. I don't know if that affects your decision. Okay. What are we thinking? Does it, does it affect Susan? Does she go on the march? Mm, no. no. They do have a okay. senior class meeting before that, and she will be at that. Right, but that's before the march. That 15, it's like 15, 20 minutes. Right. That would be fine. Okay. So are you, what are we looking at, 11, 11 a.m.? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we yep. could, um, and if folks, if people can be there in person and want to be, if you're going to be on campus anyway for the march, we could we could meet in the Where conference room. Right. At all, at, yeah. Okay. At all grades. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, no, at, um, at, I'm thinking central office. Yeah. Cause the seniors won't be at all grades. So if you want to see kids, if you want to see them. Oh, I see. The yeah. yeah. That's the only school they won't but, be. In. <laughs> but where, where is the meeting going to be at all grades? Well, no, we could meet at, oh, we could I meet in the conference room right. where we met, yep. where we met this week. Yep. To do okay. the special services. Okay. Right. We could use that room and that way we could do, we can do a hybrid for anybody. You could meet in the can. conference room here in the central office at Blanche James, and then you could just walk into the building and see the kids. Okay. Does that, does that work for everybody? So 11 a.m. on the 31st, and we will make the meeting hybrid for anybody who wants to attend in person if you're going to be on campus anyway or dial in. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, next is it's that time for my public evaluation reported for posterity. So uh, I am going to have a narrative ready for you. Uh, my goal is for it to be ready November up, uh, excuse me, May 25th. <laughs> we did my progress update where I 
went through um, several items on the on the chart of my goals. Those have almost all been made into links, but I would like to provide the narrative of each of the goals and the status. Uh, but as you know, for those of you that have done this before, there's a narrative to the evaluation. It can take time. It's probably not fun for you. I apologize in advance, but um, I, if I can provide that on the meeting on the 25th, then um, I haven't been able to find documentation on this, but I, I feel as though this is due, well, no, I know it's due in June. I just don't know if there's a date in June. And the reason it's due in June is because you actually give ratings, a grade, so to speak, in addition to the narrative, and those ratings need to be submitted to DESE. We can't roll over to a July 1st fiscal year until all of those are in. And it will just pop as red and it won't let Karen Malika switch it over if even one uh, rating is missing. So um, you could have uh, potentially the June 8th meeting or if you need longer, June 22nd. But for Karen's purposes and for us rolling over the district on honestly, the sooner the better. Uh, but so you'll have at least, you know, weeks to, to go over that. Um, Hopefully I'll make it clear enough that if you have any questions, um, we can certainly address them at the eighth. And then if you need more time to review it, um, you could turn it in or vote on it on the 22nd because you do need to vote on it. So I looked at the last time we did the review cycle in 2021, which was admittedly a little off because we were very busy with other things, uh, but we did have, we did do a month between uh, the initial kickoff of the discussion and the process and then everybody writing their review and then uh, Michelle compiling it and then presenting publicly. So um, I, I know that it's very time consuming and a very busy time of year. So I'm thinking that, vote, you know, Get, having the final presentation and review is more realistic on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, unless anybody if you have any questions or clarifying or you want more documentation, certainly we can talk about it on the 8th and I'm happy yeah. to provide that. Yeah, I think that's great. Yep. So we can do a check, add it as an agenda item checkpoint on the 8th with the final due on the 22nd. Um, and we'll follow the process last time where Lynn shared out um, all of the all of the items and the, the documentation and then we'll, we'll we can collectively decide on um, when everything comes back and how long it'll take me to <laughs> then put it all together which I know Nancy you know very well <laughs> it's, yep. it's a little time consuming but well it worthwhile <laughs> it is yes it is it is <clears throat> so okay Okay, then um, just a reminder to our wide audience that on Monday we have town meeting. The budget that the school committee voted on that the FinCom and select board have um, appro not approved, recommended. And also the CPA projects, the two big projects we have going on, those have been approved by the CPA. They have allocated the funds for them. FinCom and Select Board have recommended them. Those are all going for a vote on town meeting floor <clears throat> on Monday as well. So those are really important projects for the district. If anyone has interest in those either way, would like to speak to them and certainly would like to vote either way on them, the only chance for that is Monday at town meeting. So we encourage people to attend. The director of special services update that's ongoing, that wonderful committee put in a ton of work and uh, they're actually a week ahead of schedule. They have narrowed down to two finalists that Christy talked about at the last meeting. They did site visits this week in Easton, met lots of people, went to different schools. Next week, a small subcommittee will be going to their district. It's really helpful to see them in their element, see how they interact with people ask questions of people that they currently work with. And then I'm actually looking to do final interviews at the end of next week. So at the beginning of next week, they're going on their site visit, final interviews at the end of next week in preparation for a May 25th meeting for your consideration of whether you will um, accept the recommendation and appoint them 
or um, if you have an alternative plan. And then we have our technology director, John Souza, got a very wonderful opportunity in the private sector. And so that happens with tech people. <laughs> and uh, so unfortunately, he will be leaving us very soon. So we are putting together a job description for a systems administrator, the very tech side of things, right? The network, the infrastructure, and um, an instructional technology director who will uh, be on site and will manage the tech staff, um, help desk, repairs, Chromebooks, MCAS, budget, all that fun stuff. So those will be going out soon. We hope we have a lot of applicants. We'd like to get on somebody on board as soon as possible. He will be done this month. So we wanna get somebody on board as soon as we can. And we have had some lingering traffic concerns. We had um, Officer Aker and some other officers were out at the schools. We are just, again, asking parents to please cooperate. Um, having children go across the street, whether it's Western Ave, Columbus Ave, or Lothrop Street, in our opinion, is extremely dangerous. We are asking people to get in the queue lines. I see people every day right outside my window waiting for over half an hour for student dismissal. None of our dismissals at any of our schools take longer than 15 minutes. They're all between 13 and 15 minutes. No one needs to wait longer than 15 minutes if you come right before dismissal. So I encourage you to save some time. I encourage you to grab a coffee, leave your house later, enjoy the nice weather. It's really creating some issues for us here with traffic. People can't get in and out of our parking lots. And my biggest concern is pedestrian safety. And so we're calling on parents to please cooperate and help us with that. And finally, our STEAM night, just a reminder, is Friday. So our annual STEAM night is back after COVID from 6.30 to 8 at Richardson Olmsted School. We have always built it as pre-K to two, but honestly, we've had students up to sixth grade in there. It's very interactive and fun. I've done the activities. They're really exciting. Um, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. If you are looking for a fun thing for you to do with your kids after dinner, but before bed, we encourage you to come on into Richardson Homestead. You don't need to register for anything. Just show up. It's free. It's fun. It's educational. And the kids leave with lots of good stuff, goodies and everything. So we welcome people to please join us for that. And that is tomorrow. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. And let's see, so no assistant superintendent notes tonight. School committee notes. Nancy? Um, I don't think I have it. Just go to town meeting and be part <laughs> of it. Okay. Uh, Jackie? I echo what Nancy said. I also say go to RO. That was always one of my favorite events. I love that. <laughs> All right, Lauren, any news events, things you want to talk about tonight? Um, no. Oh, no, I'm off that. Okay. I do, I do have one more. Um, I want to thank Dr. Brown for allowing the school committee to um, sit with the two finalists for um, um, Sorry, Director of Special Services. That was um, it was great. I enjoyed meeting both of them. So thank you very much for letting us be part of that. Great. Um, so I'll do uh, what I hope is a speed through and knowing that Michelle is not here and would certainly be talking about all that's going on uh, in the music department. I, I definitely want to talk about because they're still rolling and then athletics uh, the teams are kind of entering into the end of the season so we'll know soon what the postseason uh, looks like for the teams but I, I think we'll have uh, quite a few teams and playoffs to watch over the next few weeks which is always exciting um, so non-music stuff um, many of us were at the uh, 
DEI presentation that was put on by um, Dr. Cabral and Mrs. Pruitt um, and RMK last Wednesday. So thank you for everybody who attended that. Thank you for um, uh, putting the presentation on and inviting us. Um, to attend. It was, uh, I think, a very worthwhile evening and a, and a wonderful conversation. And I hope, um, you know, another step on this path. Um, and I just hope for continued good conversation and, um, and engagement there. So that was great. Um, let's see, OA had their, uh, their art show last Friday night. It was really well attended. And wow, just, uh, it's just mind blowing how talented our kids are. Um, and then last night, um, the Family Consumer Science Business and Industrial Arts programs had their expo of student work. And again, just wow, <laughs> what our kids can create with their minds and their hands uh, using, you know, metal and wood and glue and fabric and, you know, but also technology, a lot of, um, you know, graphic design and marketing plans and, you know, model houses and, uh, you know, fabric bags, the NASA uh, program. It's just really, really amazing to see all those. So I'm so glad that our students have the opportunity to take these um, creative, interesting, hands-on electives that, that teach them some real skills. So um, Special Olympics was last Friday, and that was, you know, just arguably the best day of the year. <laughs> so um, congratulations to all of the athletes and all of the educators who helped them to participate tons of volunteers, great partnership with the Y, and really, really great to see, uh, you know, teachers who brought their classes out to cheer on their peers. It was just a, a super day. So um, thank you to, uh, to Teresa Skinner for organizing that, for all of her staff for making it happen, and our, our wonderful CPAC for all of their help with that day too. Let's see. It's been busy, right? This is this time of year. <laughs> um, so we did business and then uh, there was a lot going on in music. So um, the junior um, Southeastern uh, MAJE, which is a jazz workshop, junior SEMSBA, um, those happened last week. And tonight is the OA Spring Concert. Last night was the Tri-M um, recital, which is the Music Honor Society. And the amazing, I believe Thursday, jazz band performed at the Hat Shell. Um, at the uh, MAJE, I think, Gold Medal Expo, if I have that right. So all kinds of awesome stuff coming up over the next few weeks at all grade levels. Um, so we're really looking forward to all of that. I think that's it. Okay. And won't it be awesome to have students? That? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were going to talk about Day at the Hill, so I didn't. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So Go ahead. Jen and I had um, the honor and privilege of attending the Massachusetts Association of School Committee Day on the Hill um, at the State House. Um, we met with our legislators and um, lobbied for um, different priorities that the school. Um, needs, asks for um, requests, um, and it was um, definitely something I never, ever pictured myself doing, <laughs> but it was, it was fun. It was fun, but. Um, got a great picture. Oh, yes. We have a great picture. It's all over Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was, um, it, it was it was fun. It was an honor. Great, great. Thank you. I, I thank you so much for bringing that up. So thank you to um, and and they were very gracious with fitting us in uh, their schedules at the literally the last minute. I I don't think I'd reached out for appointments until the night before, um, but uh, Representative Carol Doherty. Uh, made herself available and um, Senator Timothy and one of his staff members. Um, so we, and we got quite a bit of time with both of them about an hour each. And then, um, and then representative um, Cassidy um, 
was not at the state house that day. He had some prior engagements, but did invite us to to reach out and schedule some time with him. Um, and um, and both Representative Doherty and Senator Timulty were very receptive to um, some of the specific legislative items that we drew their attention to. And you know they echo. Um, both what MAFC um, has asked for prioritization and align with what Dr. Cabral and, and Connor Reed had um, already uh, outlined as priorities that would benefit the district's financials. Um, so it was it was a good day. It's always a, it's a long day and amazing food, unbelievable food uh -huh. from the uh, the, vote the vocational technical schools. So okay. Um, I think that brings us to adjournment, unless anybody has anything else. Nope. All right. So our next meeting will be on the 25th. And let me just make sure that is at 5. Yep. Okay. All right. So we'll see everybody on the 25th at 5. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Well, it's been so moved. And a DeLuca second. second. DeLuca yeah. second. Great. And roll call vote. DeLuca. Yes. Wasman, yes. Star, yes. Bloom is yes. All right. Off to the spring concert. Yay. Thank <laughs> you all. Good night. Have a good night. Bye.